Hello. This video is going to be about calibration files, and specifically the differences between CCD and CMOS calibration files. Uh, the inspiration has come from a talk uh, heard recently by Jim Moransky of Finger Lakes Instruments when he was presenting at the Advanced Imaging Conference. Uh, his talk there was uh, describing the kind of the differences in approaches when moving from CCD to CMOS. It was quite mathematical in places, and I think what I'd like to do here is just have a look at the actual differences in the files and have a look at them more, slightly more graphically to give an indication of what the differences between CCD and CMOS calibration might involve. Right then, I think where I'd like to start is with BIOS frames. So what I've got on the computer here is a couple of BIOS frames, one from a CCD camera, that's the 460, and the other one from our Horizon camera, which is a CMOS camera. Okay, so just to recap, a BIOS frame is a short exposure taken in the dark. So there's, there's no light on these, uh, these images. Uh, and if you see the bottom one the, from the CCD, it's a completely random Gaussian distribution of noise. And this will become the background of an astro image. So then when we stretch a picture, eventually what we end up seeing is the underlying noise in that picture. And it's nice if it's just random without any pattern in there. Uh, on the top, we've got that of the CMOS camera. And there we can see some kind of more horizontal kind of structure there. And that's very much down to the way in which the, the technology of these two, these two technologies differ. So within the CCD, there's a single output stage. What we do is we clear it. We measured that voltage initially. We put one pixel's worth of electrons within that output stage, and we measure, measure the difference between those two voltages. And that then equates to the number of electrons and the number of photons that pixels received. Now the structure within CMOS is very different. We have the individual transistors relating to that readout actually present within the pixel itself. And it's important that we keep those electronics as simple as possible. And one of the things we often forsake within CMOS sensors is the ability to measure the initial voltage in the pixel. So what we do is we set all the pixels and then we add one pixel's worth of electrons into the output stage and measure it and make that assumption of what the initial voltage was. Uh, and the initial reset happens on a line by line or row by row basis. And any slight fluctuations within that uh, reset process ends up in generating this kind of horizontal uh, structures we have here. Uh, the way to deal with that really is to average, uh, average a number of individual frames. So quite often people say you should be averaging more CMOS uh, frames than necessarily you would do within a single CCD stack. Uh, and one of the, one of the uh, issues that that will then get round is this reset uh, signal within the, within the BIOS frame. Right, the next thing to talk about is these glows we sometimes see around the edges of a CMOS sensor. CMOS sensors are amazing devices. Uh, they contain lots and lots of electronics around the outsides of them to do with the readout uh, and, and the A to D conversion. But these generate heat, they can also generate photons, and these influence the imaging array itself and the way it appears is these glows around the edges of this image. Uh, it's something that doesn't tend to affect CCDs because you know there are very few electronics within a CCD actual sensor, but it does affect uh, CMOS. Now people will often tell you that it's not really an issue because all you just need to do is subtract a dark frame. So here we have two dark frames. These are both 60 second dark frames taken with a CMOS sensor. And what we're just going to do is we're going to subtract one from the other, then auto range it. And so, yeah, as if by magic, uh, all of that glow has disappeared. However, has it really disappeared? So, it's obviously, you can't see the glow anymore, but on this side of the image, it looks just a little bit more noisy. Uh, and we can quantify that. So if we just grab a little rectangle around there, have a look at the standard deviation in that section, we have about 
744 counts and somewhere near the middle of the sensor the standard deviation pixel is only 400 counts. So we have nearly twice as much noise up in that corner where the amp glow was. And the issue there is once we can subtract the signal of the amp glow, we can't subtract the noise that was associated with it. So when we come to think about how we're going to position an object within or on a CMOS sensor, it's useful to try and position the fainter parts of the object further away from where we might see the amp glow and the brighter parts towards where this amp glow is. That way, when we come to subtract the dark frames and still acknowledge that we'll have more noise where the amp glow is, that noise will limit the quality image less if it's at the brighter parts of that image. And so it's one of those things when transferring or transitioning from doing CCD astronomy of the CMOS uh, astronomy, you wouldn't initially think about, but it can be quite important actually, the orientation of that CMOS sensor. So we've seen how we can correct for the glows using a dark frame. Now I want to look at those dark frames in a little bit more detail and compare them with CCD. So on the bottom right hand side here, we have a dark frame from a Sony CCD, it's from the 460 camera again. And uh, often what we say here is that there's so few hot pixels and so low dark current within the Sony C CCD cameras that there's very little point actually using dark frames. We tend to dither and then stack using some dithering technology or techniques. Uh, so the actual uh, the actual dark frames end up looking an awful lot like bias frames when we just auto range them on this software. Now the other three images are again 60 second dark frames taken from a CMOS sensor. CMOS sensor has much more dark current so he ends up with uh, the appearance of many more uh, hot pixels within these, these images. But what we'll do again is we'll just uh, subtract one from the other. Oops. Uh, subtract. Uh, so we use A as the calibration. So we've subtracted an, a dark frame from the other dark frame effectively. And then if we look at the couple of thousand counts after that, after the tail of the histogram, it's, it's done a really good job of uh, taking all the hot pixels out. So we've got this other dark frame up here. So if we repeat the same process on that dark frame, again, subtract this calibration image. Uh, and we just look at a couple of thousand counts after the tail of the histogram. And here we can see that this, this frame hasn't calibrated as well. There's more hot pixels that's made it through onto what would be the final image effectively. So why is that? Well, the difference between these two images is the top one was taken directly after taking some short focus frames. So the CCD camera was taking a 10 frames per second or something, small region of interest, running quickly. And in this kind of way, because all the electronics on a CMOS sensor, actually on the CMOS chip itself, uh, these heat up and then the frames start to calibrate less well. The bottom one was just taken as one of a series of one minute uh, dark frames. Uh, so that again, you should be thinking when, we, when you're doing calibration, files and when you're doing your images, image files themselves, to make sure those conditions are as consistent as possible. Uh, anything that happens differently has the possibility to change the way in which a file will calibrate or an image will calibrate. And we do hear back a number of times that uh, calibration files within CMOS, you know, when doing CMOS imaging, tend to be a bit more tricky and sometimes they work and sometimes they don't work. And this can be one of the reasons in which people can start to have a few problems with actually generating those calibration files. So a little bit of care there will kind of take care of that. The final type of calibration file I'd like to talk about are flat fields. Uh, so again, on the computer, uh, we have a number of flat fields. So we take the top left, this is a flat field from a CCD, again the Attic 460. Uh, I've struggled a little bit with the illumination on this one, so it's slightly brighter down one corner, but then it's sometimes difficult to get a really good flat. 
but this is this is basically yeah a normal flat field from a CCD and all the the pixel values in there look nicely random if we do the same thing from a CMOS sensor uh, just zoom in on that guy again it all looks like a normal random flat field image full of photon noise well what we then do is uh, we average a number of these to get the master flat this is with again the Sony CCD uh, let me zoom in there the gradients start to come out a lot more obvious on this one but uh, okay if we just zoom in we can see that what pixel values we do what well, pixel values we do have there are all pretty pretty randomly distributed there's there's no fixed pattern signal in there uh, then have a look at the CMOS image from the CMOS sensor uh, if we zoom in on this one then we can see fairly quickly that that image there is not particularly random there's lots of fixed pattern signal within it and that really uh, is down to the differences between CCD and CMOS the whole advance on CMOS imaging really has become with the miniaturization of transistors and circuits that can be put on silicon uh, however there's these are difficult to replicate precisely so some pixels will have slightly thicker tracks around them and it might be that there is just ways in which these traces and circuits are laid out on the sensor surface that uh, generates or means that some pixels are slightly more sensitive than other pixels to light and this comes up with this fixed pattern noise now it really is there it's a real thing is present in all the images so it's well worth uh, taking uh, removing using a flat field when you're doing CCD imaging you tend to only do flat fields in order to get rid of vignetting around the edges of an image and sometimes you can just get rid of that with a gradient exterminator uh, with CMOS is much there's much more value to having a really good flat field and subtracting that or dividing that in order to get rid of not just the vignetting but also the fixed pattern noise that may be present there okay then. so we've looked at a number of uh, calibration images and the way in which they differ regarding if you're using a CCD or a CMOS camera now some of these CMOS cameras have a lot of advantages so they are can be very high speed uh, that can be really quite cost effective however we do just need to take a little bit more care when we're dealing with the calibration images and the other thing I should really mention is that all of this applies if we've got a fixed gain and offset so a lot of the CMOS cameras will allow us to change gain and offset what you should really do is to work out the gain and offset that works for you and then stick with it never change it because as soon as you change it then all your calibration files will need to be redone so stick with what you know and yeah take a little bit more care maybe with the calibration and you can get some really great results out of the CMOS cameras okay then I hope that's been useful thank you very much for watching thank you